this Tech Friday, I really wanted to dedicate it to um, the new uh, wheelchair spot that their Delta is creating for uh, their uh, aircrafts. It doesn't mean that other aircrafts won't take it on as well. They might, you know, do some kind of agreement or contract, you know, to purchase uh, these new seats that fold up in the bulkhead of the plane, and uh, then the wheelchair can just back out, back into it. So uh, it's very exciting right now. They went to Germany for the exhibit, the, ex the exhibition and the conference, and a lot of people liked it. So it, that's one hurdle for people to be able to make comments and observations and all that kind of stuff and to see it actually in, in action. So, uh, so that went well. Um, they have two more steps that they need to make for this wheelchair model for aircrafts to go through. One <coughs> is that they need to test it and document the, the tests and then they need to apply for the certification and get that passed. So those are the two steps, the testing and the certification uh, in the UK. I don't know how that will, you know, uh, fly over literally in the United States. So they might need to do uh, certification in different countries or just in the UK, I don't know. So, uh, but the certification is kind of like the final test. Will it happen tomorrow? No. Do we wish it would? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Um, but uh, right now, uh, they have to do those two things. My encouragement to all of us is if you are in the market to look at a new manual or power wheelchair, to make sure that you request brackets with that wheelchair. So, and the reason why and you might say, okay, Lisa, what, what are brackets? The brackets are metal plates that are placed underneath your seat and get bolted down. And on the outside of your seat, there's a loop. There's a very strong metal loop. And um, manual wheelchairs have them and power wheelchairs. And that's what you would need basically to be uh, locked down in an airplane so or a bus or a train. So... Uh, I want to encourage you, if you don't have brackets, it, I don't think it's going to break anything. I think they'll just, you know, wrap it around the frame of the wheelchair. But I think that I would want to encourage everyone to get brackets. And it just might become a requirement, uh, especially if you're going to fly. So, <clears throat> Uh, so that is it for where we're at right now with the process. It might take one to three years uh, to get this all wrapped up. I know we want it tomorrow. <laughs> We've been waiting for this for a long time. So hopefully that will happen soon. So, so I will leave it at that. I will keep you posted in the uh, wheelchair travel opinion if there's any new developments. I just wanted to add it here to Tech Friday so that you would know where, where things are at right now, what the documents are saying, or what the news is, the last news on that. So that's for the airlines. Now we're gonna go to uh, another design. There is a design for uh, a new wheelchair. I think this is Japan or China. I'm not clear as to where. Um, this uh, wheelchair is very slick, very modern looking. However, uh, it's a bit too slick. <laughs> sleek. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it does look sleek and slickery. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I want to encourage any, any person who is interested in designing wheelchairs to, to do so. However, I am hoping that the people who designed this wheelchair, that one of them or some of them uh, are in a wheelchair themselves. Because if you look at this model, it doesn't feel safe for me. Because if I fell on the floor and I was trying to get up, I'm not sure I'd be able to get up with this type of wheelchair. 
Um, yes, it looks nice. Yes, it looks very modern and very sleek, and they cover the wheels and everything else, and it looks like it floats. Yes, great. Uh, it doesn't have a foot plate. You can elevate the bottom part of the chair, and that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I'm not sure I would go for a wheelchair of this design. Uh, <laughs> a motorized wheelchair is called Resilience uh, in aluminum and metals, uh, so other metals. Uh, I just don't know. <laughs> I have questions about it. Uh, I would think it would need to go through uh, rehab or rehabilitation uh, people to for them to put give their input, but also for us. And it's for indoors and outdoors, yay. Uh, but I don't think it would work for outdoors. I really don't. It has zero distance between the wheelchair and the floor. <laughs> so... If you're going to go outdoors, I think your wheelchair is going to last two minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> especially going over cracks and uh, potholes and getting off of sidewalks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I suspect that the people who designed this wheelchair uh, really uh, do not use wheelchairs and they do not have disabilities because for us who use it on a daily basis, uh, we know the, the obstacles. I would say for indoors, yeah. For outdoors, no. <laughs> it would not pass. <laughs> not in a million years. <laughs> so um, I would say that this model needs a little bit more work. Um, and they should consult people who are in wheelchairs uh, so that they understand what we go through and what the real world out there presents, the challenges that are presented to us. But yes, if you tried this wheelchair outdoors, it would last less than probably two minutes. <laughs> so I appreciate, I appreciate the people who participated in designing the wheelchair. Um, I've seen other slick and sleek modernized uh, uh, models. Uh, but this one takes the cake. <laughs> so um, this one was designed by one, two, three, four, five people. So uh, their names are very difficult. Hang Yun Li, Hyun Su Shin, Hyun Jun Park, Sun Min Ha, and uh, Sun Min Ha and Hong So So Jung P. <laughs> so, uh, so it doesn't say where it's being designed right now. Let me see here. No, it doesn't say. Uh, so uh, it just says it draws from his fortified mindset for their wheelchair design, which they name right after the psychological ability. So it, this is written in uh, from someone who does not speak, it was not fluent in English. So there are some sentences that, that don't make sense. So uh, I would suggest, yes, when you uh, have a model of a wheelchair or any other machine, that you need to find someone who is native in the language to write it up for you because some of your sentences are not making sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry about that comment, but it's true. Uh, and if you want something to be uh, read easily by the people who are going to take a look at your model, it needs to be written in very good English. So anyway, most of the wheelchair parts is constructed with metal which for the design team symbolizes strength and uh, delicacy while engineering a well-built frame. On the side of the armrest, the controller is cloth closed with leather to provide comfort to the user should they want to rest their arm there and add padding to the buttons. Okay, so it, it goes on. The, to describe it as a very comfortable wheelchair. Um, however, uh, people are 
different. Either they're tall or they're short or they have a missing hip or they have missing legs or missing arms or, you know, you, you, when you look at your design, you, you got to figure out how this wheelchair is going to accommodate the person with disabilities regardless of their condition. So that is another issue. For the colors, nuances of soft gray, light chrome, and cool brown bestow the wheelchair an aura of elegance that makes it a candidate to be a classic motorized chair. So I don't think we're looking for uh, elegance. <laughs> we're looking for something that's not going to hurt us, <laughs> something that's going to help us <laughs> across the floor from point A to point B. So. Um, do consult uh, to this team, I am speaking to you, who have designed this wheelchair, that you touch base with people who use wheelchairs, and they'll be able to give you feedback as to um, what is recommended and not recommended and the things that you need to change on this wheelchair as soon as possible. <laughs> so, and especially the cost. Uh, I don't know mu much about how much it costs them to put this together, but um, the cost would be a concern for me. So anyhow, that is my comment on uh, this wheelchair uh, that is called, it has a name, uh, Resilience. So Resilience will need to be remodeled <laughs> and redone. This is coming from the Design Boom uh, uh, newsletter. Uh, so it does not give an author. I'm going to assume that the people who designed the wheelchair submitted the document for this newsletter. So I want to thank the designers, certainly, uh, for their efforts. Uh, but it needs to be redesigned a bit so that it is truly uh, affordable and uh, it is a safer model for us because sometimes we can fall and uh, we need a wheelchair that we can grab a hold of and, and be able to get ourselves back up into the chair. So, uh, and that is missing. Also, it is missing a distance between the ground and the wheelchair itself. If you're saying this wheelchair is for outdoors, the model is completely wrong because you need to have a distance between the floor, the ground, and the wheelchair. Otherwise, the bottom part of your wheelchair is going to break into a thousand pieces because <laughs> we have to deal with potholes and rocks and dirt, and um, we have to deal with getting off of sidewalks and getting back onto sidewalks, and your model does not fit that description. So anyhow... Um, I will leave it up to the viewers to put their comments in, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm hoping that you will find this video at some point in your life, and you can hear the and read the comments from wheelchair users. <laughs>